All right, this is section 9.1, Applications Involving Right Triangles. Uh, this is going to remind you a lot of chapter seven because the same techniques that we use to uh, solve right triangles. Uh, before we get started, we should review a couple of things. For starters, you have to be very, very careful how you label your right triangles. For instance, angle A, the side that is across from angle A is side A. This is very important to link those up. Uh, for angle B, the side that is across from angle B is side B. And then the right triangle, the side that's across from that is C. So make sure if you have to solve a triangle where they give you angle A and angle B and side A, B, and C, make sure you label it correctly. Once again, they have to be across from each other. And the other thing that's a quick review is we have Pythagorean theorem here. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. That allows you to solve, you know, if you know two sides, it allows you to solve for the extra one by using that. And we also have angle A plus angle B has to equal 90 degrees. Why is that? It's because the sum of the interior angles have to be equal to 180. So if angle C is already 90, I have 90 left. So A and B have to sum to 90 degrees. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Here's our first example. Use the right triangle and the given information to solve the triangle. Okay, first of all, we know that side A equals 6. Angle B is 75 degrees. And we have to find all the rest of the information here. All right, since we're basing everything on the angle beta, which is 75 degrees, uh, the side that I know is the adjacent side. And B is the opposite side, and C is the hypotenuse. All right, uh, the first thing I'm going to go after is angle A, or alpha. Uh, I know that A plus B have to sum to 90 degrees. So I take 90 minus 75. Uh, and when I do that, that's going to give me angle A, which is 15 degrees. Okay, so I have angle A done. Now I'm going to go after side B. All right, so side B, uh, if we look at it, is the opposite side, and I know the adjacent side. So what trick function links up opposite over adjacent? And if you said tangent, that is correct. So tangent theta equals opposite over adjacent. Okay. That's my cat, if you just heard him. He likes to make cute little sounds when he's purring. Anyways, so tangent alpha, uh, tangent theta, what is, what's the angle we're looking at? It's 75 degrees. So we get tangent of 75 degrees equals opposite, which is side B, we don't know what that is, over adjacent, which is six. Solving for B, we get six tangent of 75 degrees, okay? And when you plug that into your calculator, make sure your mode is in degrees. And when you do that, you get side B is equal to 22.4. And by the way, I rounded to the nearest tenth, but uh, on my math line, make sure you read the directions to see what you're supposed to round to. All right, and now we're looking for side C. Okay, so side C is the hypotenuse. Remember the given angles are adjacent and we have 75 degrees. So I'm looking for something that links up adjacent to the hypotenuse. And if you said cosine, you're right. So cosine is the, the, trig, ang or the trig function that links up adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'm gonna go ahead and write out cosine theta equals adjacent, which is six over the hypotenuse. Uh, the angle that I'm using is 75 degrees. I always like to use the one that's given, that's why I'm using that one. And we have six over the hypotenuse. All right, so if I solve both sides for h, I get h times cosine of 75 degrees equals 6. Uh, h equals 6 divided by cosine of 75 degrees. So what is h equal? h equals 23.2. Okay, once again, I'm rounding to the nearest tenths of, uh, after the decimal point there. Okay, so I found... H, was, which is actually C, so let me like fix that. 
so C is, is what we were looking for, and that is a hypotenuse, same thing, but still, let's just make sure that looks right. Okay, um, by the way, if you notice, I used the angle that was given right off the bat, and I used the given side. The reason why I do that is because if I made a mistake, for instance, you know, instead of using A, I used B, and let's say I figured out B was the wrong answer, now I have everything wrong. Um, so when I go through these, I always use what's given. Okay, let's do the next one. Objective two, application problems. So here's an example. A tower that is 122 feet tall cast a shadow 125 feet long. Find the angle of elevation of the sun to the nearest tenth of the degree. So we're basically looking for this angle here. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and redraw the triangle. So let's draw that out again. So I have 122, and then this one's 125, and we're looking for this angle here. Okay, so if we're looking at the angle, I'm trying to figure out what trig function to use. The side 122 is opposite the angle that I was given, and then 125 is the adjacent side. So I'm looking for a trig function that links up opposite over adjacent. And if you guess tangent, you're right. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So let's go ahead and write this out. Tangent theta, I don't know what theta is, equals the opposite side, which is 122, over the adjacent side, which is 125. Okay, to solve for theta, I'm going to need to multiply both sides by inverse tangent. Okay, what I do to one side, I have to do the other. Okay. So now I have theta equals inverse tangent of 122 divided by 125. Uh, so go ahead and do that on your calculator. It should still be in degrees from the last problem. And theta is equal to 44.3 degrees. Okay, and once again, I just rounded off to the tenth uh, because the directions told me to round to the nearest tenth of a degree. Okay, let's go see what the next uh, one holds for us. All right, objective three is talking about bearings. Bearings are used in uh, navigation of either ships on the sea or boats uh, or airplanes. Um, so let's check this out to make sure we understand it first. In navigation and surveying, the direction or bearing from point O to a point P equals the acute angle theta between the ray OP and the vertical line through the origin, or O, uh, the north-south line. Okay, guys, so here's the north-south line. That's what we're looking at here. Figure 6 illustrates some bearings. Notice that the bearing from the origin to P1 is denoted by the symbolism north 30 degrees east, indicating that the bearing is 30 degrees east of north. In writing the bearing from O to P, the direction north or south always appears first, followed by the acute angle, followed by east or west. So in figure six, the bearing O to P2 is south, 50 degrees west, and from O to P3 is north, 70 degrees west. Okay, so if you look at P1, uh, that's what I'm paying attention to right now. I'm going to make that blue. I'm going to try to. There we go. Okay, so that point is titled north, and then we take the angle, which is 30 degrees, and then east. Uh, so uh, if you look at P2, for instance, this one's called uh, um, south 50 degrees west. P3 is north 70 degrees west, and P4 we have to find on the next page. But the moral of the story is, Whenever you're doing bearings, let's like, like make a little X there, you always title them as north or south first. Okay, so you're paying attention to that vertical line. Is it north or is it south? Then you're going to place in the acute angle or the degree measurement of the angle. Okay? And finally, after you put the degree measurement, then you let us know where it's at. Is it west? or east. Okay, so let's go ahead and try this out. We're going to look at P4, which is right here. I just circled it. P4 
four is in the southern quadrant. So I know I'm gonna have to put south. Now I need the angle from the south pole, which is 20 degrees. And then now I need to indicate if it's west or east. Since it's on the east side of the south line, it's south 20 degrees east. Okay. So let's look at this next one. This is actually going to kind of use the bearings and put the trig together. It says a Boeing 777 aircraft takes off from Nashville International Airport on runway two left, which has the bearing of north 20 degrees east. After flying for one mile, the pilot of the aircraft requests permission to turn 90 degrees and head towards the northwest. The request is granted. After the plane goes two miles in this distance, what bearing should the control tower use to locate the aircraft? Okay, so uh, here is, we have to make a diagram first of all. You know, here's east, here's west, here's north, and here's south. Okay, so he starts off, um, and his initial bearing is north 20 degrees east. So we know this is 20 here. I was trying to put a point, but the computer doesn't like that. Okay, and uh, then, by the way, he flies that for one mile. Okay, now it says that he gets permission to turn 90 degrees, so that makes a 90 degree angle here, and he flies out for two miles. Okay, so from here to here is two miles. Okay, so we have that down pat. Now we just got to figure out what bearing is this. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and bring the line down here, and that creates a right triangle. Um, so let's draw it out and see what we have. Uh, I'm going to rotate the triangle so that the right angle is right here. So remember, he flew one mile. And then he went two miles, and we need to find out what is this point at the top. Okay, uh, just to let you know, we got to be careful because, um, you know, and like I said, I'm just redrawing it. But remember, this is the north line, right? So 20 degrees of this, I know. I'm going to look for this entire angle here, and if I find this entire angle, I'll be able to know what to call this. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. So once again, if I redraw the triangle, you know, here's the right angle here. So remember he flew one mile here, two miles here. What is this angle? Okay, so uh, once again, we gotta figure out the sides according to where my angle is. The two is the opposite side. The one is the adjacent side. So I'm going to use tangent. So tangent theta is opposite over adjacent, and I'm going to plug stuff in. So I don't know what theta is. That stays alone. Opposite side is 2. Adjacent side is 1. Uh, to solve for theta, I have to take inverse tangent of both sides. Uh, so let me do that. Um, so I get theta equals the inverse tangent of 2. And when you plug that into your calculator, you're going to get... 63.4 degrees. Okay, that is not my answer because remember that 20 degrees of that was on the northeast quadrant. So what I have to do is now take uh, and subtract theta, excuse me, that's what we just found, the 20 degrees from theta is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so when I do that, I get 43.4 degrees. Okay, so where is a pilot? Well, the pilot is over here in the northwest quadrant. So how do I write that up? North. Now I know the angle from here to here, and I'll highlight what I'm doing right here, is 43.4 degrees. We just found that. So go ahead and put 43.4 degrees in there. And now it's west because it's a western quadrant. So north, 43.4 degrees west is your answer. And that is the end of this section.